trippy red. The god himself, the legend of hip hop. Over the past couple of years, trippy red has been changing the game for the better. He's been, he's been shaping the way we see hip hop. Actually, in reality, Trippy Red is one of the most unspecial artists in the past couple of years. Last year, he released his, uh, I don't know if it was his debut, but he released the album Pegasus. It was anticipated because nobody else was releasing albums at the time. Everybody, everybody was talking about it, and I don't know why everybody was talking about it. It was terrible. It was, it was basically an album only for hardcore Trippy Red fans, which I hope they don't exist because they'll trash this video. Essentially, it was a 26 track hour and 17 minute album. It took me three nights to finish due to every time I'd sit down and play it, I'd fall asleep after like five songs. My first impressions of Trippy Red there weren't very positive. So when I um, heard he was doing a uh, Neon Shark versus Pegasus, I didn't get too excited. I got even less excited when I found out Travis Barker was the producer of this. Now, I don't hate Travis Barker. I think what he goes for, he's all right at. But in my personal opinion, he is basically creating the most bland metal trap ever. And every time he touches another rapper's song, I hate it. I generally speaking hate rap and rock combined. They should be completely separated. They're different worlds. And generally speaking, I don't really like modern rock anyway. I am a generally, un, un, comparatively to other rap fans, I actually really like uh, rock music. But in recent times, the modern rock, the aesthetic kind of going for artists like Black Bear, Machine Gun Kelly that are ruining rock. These artists are basically reshaping, they're basically turning rock back a decade. And it really annoys me. And Travis Barker, I don't think is helping. I think he's kind of just making it worse because I don't think the world of rock and the world of hip hop were ever meant to meet. There are times where they've been combined and they sound nice. There are some Jay-Z beats where he uses some rock. There's some songs where, and oh, how about Rick Rubin? Rick, oh, okay, there actually is some good rock rap like Run DMC, Beastie Boys, and like, like Rick Rubin, like 99 Problems. Those are great rock rap songs, but whenever, there is a specific way that these artists fuse it that's the worst. How they're fusing it is they're not actually, they're not trying to make a rock rap album. They're trying to make a rock album. The last couple examples I've had recently being the two worst albums of all time, in my opinion, Supermarket and Speed and Bullet to Heaven, Logic and Kid Cudi. These two albums are both purely unlistenable, in my opinion, because both of them are these terrible rock rap fusions that have no like set goal. They're just terrible albums. I, like okay, when I heard that Trippy Red was doing that, it terrified me because I don't think Trippy Red's good in the first place. At least Logic and Kid Cudi are talented artists. He, Trippy has literally zero talent. He's coming in with these features like Machine Gun Kelly and Black Bear and like Scarlard and Z Zilla Cami. And why? The thing about this whole album that just terrifies me going into it was that it's a, a really boring trap artist who doesn't know that he's boring. Like the most talented face on this whole album is freaking Travis Barker. We open everything off with the track Pill Breaker, which um, surprisingly enough is the tamest track on this whole album. It has a very underwhelming and obnoxiously annoying instrumental by Travis Barker. The main thing I didn't love about this track, I think Black Bear is pretty bland on it. I never didn't really expect much more from him. Um, Trippy Red's hook comes across like a really bad Juice World impression, the way he's kind of hitting these notes and the way he's kind of moving across the beat and what he's talking about just feels like he a terrible uh, Juice World impression. Then we have MGK, whom I think I'm officially ready to call this one of the worst artists out today. This song, he is so bad. His vocals are just so degrading and annoying and they're, it's so bad. As a whole, it's just a really like, just a really corn fused bad track. But it's like up there is one of the best on the album. Without You is pretty bad. Trippy, this is the, where the album really hits the rock kind of sound. I don't think Trippy sounds nice across Travis's production at all that pot, the trap style, his vocals, 
don't fit well with Travis's production. Once again, it sounds like more bad Juice World impressions. Swimming um, reminded me of the Mac Miller album, you know, the really great Mac Miller album. It's terrible. It's like the same thing over and over again, over a terrible rock instrumental. Lord have mercy on my soul. Female Shark is... <laughs> the way he repeats the freaky girl over and over again, oh my god, it's... still in my head, it works so bad. It's like he's trying. <laughs> what the fuck? Halfway through this song, actually, one of my friends called me. I didn't want to talk as I was listening to music. The freaking ringtone, like, felt like sanctuary to me. The iPhone ringtone! Geronimo. Geron- Why is there a song called Geronimo? <laughs> SeaWorld, the only thought I had when listening to SeaWorld was the fact that there are eight tracks left. Red Sky only left me with one question for the whole album. Why the hell is Machine Gun Kelly on two, two tracks. tracks? Megalodon. I, why did the song open with just like really weird whale sounds? Save yourself. This. 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 Fuck. This. I'm not even joking right now. The track Dreamer. Actually, I'm not. I'm not even joking here. It actually opens with the. You know that you ever had a dream, kid? Have you ever had a dream? That that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do everything. So it actually opened with that kid like that it plays that sound at the beginning of the song. It's coming. Why you gotta do me like this, man? What the fuck? Later is opened up with a really nice guitar. And my, like, first thought listening to the song was, please don't fuck up that guitar. Frozen Ocean, um, the only thought I had when listening to the song was trippy. Stop singing, you fucking bitch. Then we hit the final track. We're actually at the end of this god-awful album, Dead Desert. Um... And I, I think the best way to describe this track is imagine the worst fusion of trap and rock like ever. There's a Scarlard verse, which I'm not even joking, might be one of the worst verses I've ever heard in the history of hip hop. Like in the entire history of this genre, the whole genre, this might be one of the worst verses I've ever had the displeasure of hearing. This verse made me want to stick a spoon in my fucking ear and remove my eardrum. And Zilla's cami comes in on a verse. It's actually somewhat of a sanctuary because at least it's only atrocious and it didn't make me want to cut my ears off. The best part about this whole track was that it basically, it's the end to the album. Neon Shark versus Pegasus is one of the worst albums I've ever had the mispleasure of hearing. I, I don't know why this was made. I can't, I can't believe this actually like came out. Like, like somebody sat there and was like, yes, that's, that's, that's the one. I don't even know where the neon shark of this album like came from. Like, I don't know why, like, yeah, wh why neon shark? This album is so terrible. It's, it's it's practically unlistenable. Um, the only reason this isn't at the top of my worst albums of all time list is that it's at least only 40 minutes and it's not nearly the length of Supermarket and Speed and Bullet to Heaven, which are both too long. Neon Shark versus Pegasus can go fuck itself. This album is... God. F. F. F is for fuck, you trippy red.